Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons again. Uh, today we're going to look at amount of substance and importantly the two subjects of empirical and molecular formula. So by the end of this session you should be able to do the following three things. So you should be able to recall the definition for empirical and molecular formula. You should be able to calculate empirical formula from experimental data and you should be able to use empirical formula to calculate the following molecular formula. Okay, so let's get straight on and have a look at these two things in due course. So empirical formula we may have met before and the definition here, so our definition we can give as it's the simplest whole number ratio of each atom in a molecule. So the best way to think about this is really to have a look at some examples. Here we've got one, two, three, four examples and we'll do each one in turn. The first here, number one, is the molecular formula C2H6 and that's ethane the simplest whole number ratio well all of these got a common factor of two so if I divide everything through by two I could split this into units of CH3 so CH3 there being the empirical formula and the top line there being our molecular formula, the actual number of atoms. So here's our next, B6H10. Maybe not a molecule we've come across before, but we can see there, well, there's a couple of possibilities. We could divide by 2, which would give us B3H5, or B3H5 could divide to get down to 2 but then I would have uh, not a whole number ratio so if I was to, to divide there by 3's I would have B2 and then it would be H uh, and it wouldn't be a whole number so our empirical formula is B3H5 simplest whole number ratio C6H12 here which is hexane our simplest whole number ratio here is going to be, well, could divide by 2, C3H4, but actually here, if I'm going to divide through by 6, I'm going to get CH2 is my empirical formula. The final example here at the end, here, C2H7N, well, the nitrogen at the end is a singular one, so that is already in its simplest formula, and our empirical formula therefore is C2H7N. So, we'll use those ideas and we'll go and have a look at what we call the molecular formula. Now. So, the molecular formula. Our definition here is in fact, as we're quite used to, is actually the actual number of each atoms in a molecule. So here, a molecular formula CH4 tells me that actually I've got one carbon and four hydrogen. So I could work out the molecular mass here would be 1 times 12, 4 times 1 gives me 16. In this case, HCl, how many of each? Yeah, nice and easy. One hydrogen, one chlorine. Could also work out the molecular mass there. 36.5 grams per mole. And the final one there, C2H4, ethene. We've got two carbons. We've got four hydrogens. Got my 
make to the mass of 28. Importantly though, it tells us the exact number of each atom in a molecule. So the next step then is really to see how molecular formula and empirical formula interact with each other and how we can work out from an empirical formula, the molecular formula, and also how we can work out the empirical formula. So let's see how it goes. So we said before that the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of each element in a molecule. What that means is to work out the empirical formula, we have to ratio the number of moles of each atom in a molecule. And how do we do that? Well, there's four relatively straightforward steps that we can take. And if we follow these, these steps, then we can work out the empirical formula. It's also, if you've looked at the videos there on water crystallization, very similar method for working at the water crystallization. But there we were using molecules, here we're using atoms. So the first thing to do is to write out the mass or percentage of each element. So we'll go through, and as I talk through these steps, we'll look at these examples. So the percentage here of iron and of oxygen, well, we could assume perhaps that there was 100 grams and therefore we would have 72.4% iron, so that was in grams, and of oxygen, if we had 100 grams, we'd have 27.6 grams. So that's step one. So step two then, divide each by the AR to calculate the moles. Well, the AR of iron is 56 and of oxygen 16. So here we'll have, to work out the moles, we've got 72.4 over 56. And here we've got uh, 27.6 over 16. We'll pop that into our calculator. For our iron we get 1.29 moles and for the oxygen we get 1.73. We're going to ratio those together. So to do that we divide by the smallest. Well if we look at here the smallest of these two values, that's right, we've got iron so we're going to divide here by the smallest which in this case is 1.29 so 1.29 divided by 1.29 hopefully your math gets you out at 1 and then we have here 1.73 divided by 1.29 and we plug that into our calculators and we end up with approximately 1.33 1.34 so if we were to look at this ratio, we've got a one to one and a third. But remember, we're looking for, that's right, the whole number ratio. So if we've got a third, to get up to a whole number, we're going to multiply both of these values up. And we're going to end up with multiplying by three to get a Whole number ratios, we have three ions to four oxygens, and our empirical formula becomes Fe3O4. Straightforward, well, okay, let's check that we can do the same again here. This time, with our second example, we'll do exactly the same thing. I'll give you a second, perhaps you might have a go at it yourself first. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about that, perhaps pause the video. Now I'll take you through those steps. So we're replaying the video. We've got hydrogen, 0.25 grams. So this is already in grams. We don't need a percentage. And oxygen is 4.25 grams of oxygen. First step to find out the atomic mass, which is 1 for hydrogen and 16 for the oxygen. Work out the moles. We have 0.25 over 1, and we have 4.25 over 16 
we've got 0.25 and 0.25 here. Well, they're both the smallest number, so we're going to divide by the smallest. So, which in this case is 0.25. So 0.25 over 0.25 which is 1, and 0.25 over 0.25, which is 1 again. So our empirical formula in this instance is HO. Notice that this is empirical formula, so that's simply the the simplest whole number ratio. It's not actually the empirical formula, or sorry, it's not actually the molecular formula for hydrogen peroxide. The, the molecular formula being H2O2 is the molecular formula. So the simplest ratio is H. In the next step, we're going to look and see how we can work out molecular formulas from empirical formulas. Okay. So molecular mass and how we calculate it from empirical mass this time. We've got our equation or our steps at the top here. Three steps. And calculate the empirical mass, work out the ratio by doing of the empirical mass to the molecular mass, and then finally multiply the empirical mass by the ratio to give us a molecular formula. But in our example, the first thing we're going to have to do is to work out, uh, calculate our empirical formula from the equation. So we've got, first of all, we're going to practice working out our empirical formula. So our important details in this question, we've got Phosphorus contains 56.4 grams, or 56.4%, so if we're in 100 grams, it'd be 56.4. We've got oxygen, which is 43.6 grams, and then we're going to do the same as before. So the atomic mass here for phosphorus is 31, and while for oxygen it's 16. So the moles... Remember, first thing to do, 56.4 over 31, and the oxygen is 43.6 over 16. And if we put those into our calculator, we end up with 1.82, while for the oxygen we get 2.725 divide through then by the smallest number which is 1.82 to get the ratios and you should find here 2.725 over 1.82 is 1.497, which is pretty close to 1.5. Not going to get much closer. Therefore, our empirical, remember, is the simplest whole number ratio. So we're going to multiply both of these up by 2, and we'll end up with P. Two, oh, three. So there is my empirical formula. Now, what we're interested in is the molecular formula. So we're going to come back up to our steps up here. So the first thing to do is calculate the empirical mass. So the empirical mass. going to be 2 times by 31 for the phosphorus, plus 3 times by 16, and that is 110, we might have already seen. Work out the ratio, so our ratio here is going to be equal to, and there we've seen a slight mistake, course. Sometimes you pick those up, it's actually going to be 
the molecular mass over the empirical mass and it's 220 over 110 giving us a ratio of 2 so our molecular formula is made up of two units of the empirical formula so our molecular formula then becomes 2 times P2O3 giving us a molecular formula here for the phosphorus oxide of P4O6 simple as that so just be aware of that slight mistake earlier on the molecular mass and I'll try and update that in the video so quick recap Three things you should be able to do now. Recall the definition for empirical molecular formula. Calculate the empirical formula from the experimental data. And finally, use empirical formula to calculate molecular formula. That's a lot. Bye for now.